Welcome back to Inspired Forward, everyone. I'm Dan Trinidad, and I can't wait for you to hear and meet our guest, Mark Mayoka. Mark is the best-selling author of the Core 7, What's Your Rate? It's designed to go to customers to help them uh, figure out and learn how to, to purchase a home. I can't wait to hear about that. He's been in the mortgage industry 20 years. He's closed over a billion dollars in loans and generated hundreds of outgoing referrals to Core 7 partners. Uh, Mark's the creator of other online courses such as Mortgage Jumpstart, the Core 7 Mortgage Originator, the Core 7 Real Estate Agent, the Core 7 Financial Professional, Core 7 Lunch and Learn, and the Core 7 Coaching Curriculum. He's a husband and a father of three. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me, Dan. I'm excited. Yeah, you bet. I've heard so much about you over these years through, I think we've got a lot of the same, the same connections and, um, you know, relationships and your name continues to pop up and social media never helps either. You, it never right. hurts either. I hear, hear, uh, and see you on social media all the time. So maybe Mark, maybe what you could do is start off, uh, telling us how you got into the mortgage industry and, and how you built it um and kind of where you're at now and then we'll we'll go from there all right great uh like uh like most professionals i didn't uh it kind of was by accident <laughs> that i got into the mortgage business it was funny back in 1997 um you know i wanted to do something i i just i i was like i gotta get serious about life i you know have to have a job that's gonna gonna make me some money and give me a career so uh, at that point, I wanted to be a stockbroker, and uh, I actually went to, I was studying for it, taking the Series 7 exams, and I actually went to Arizona. Now, I I don't know who goes to Arizona to be a stockbroker, but that was me, <laughs> and uh, so I went out to Arizona, and uh, within like two or three days, I realized they didn't want to be a stockbroker. Uh, definitely wasn't for me. And so now I'm out in Arizona. I'm kind of stranded from home. And I had a cousin out there. Um, and I, I called them and they said, well, what do you want to do? Because um, I, I had sent out 50 resumes. I remember I stayed up for like two days straight. I was really nervous. I, st I sent out like 50 resumes. I got two back. One from Motorola saying that they uh, received my resume. And one from uh, some pyramid scheme to sell like... Uh, <laughs> It was one of those, um, it was network marketing and it was great until I realized that, you know, I had to pay them and buy the stuff and <laughs> all that. <laughs> so my cousin said, uh, he said, well, what do you want? And I said, well, I'd really like a job that, you know, sky's the limit income. And if I do a good job and he said, oh, you want to be a loan officer. And I, I, I had no idea what a loan officer was. I thought I was going to be carrying a gun, guarding the bank. You know, I had no idea. Um, but, uh, you know, so he got me in with uh, North American Mortgage in Mesa, Arizona. And I just started learning the business. And I said, wow, this is a cool business. I started going to all the classes. Uh, and then what I found out was, you know what? I could, I think I could do really well at this business if I was back home in Boston where I was born and raised, where I had contacts and connections. So I went back and uh, hooked up with North American Mortgage in uh, Waltham, Massachusetts, which is uh, one town over from where I live in Newton. Was that, and, in, uh, was that in 87? 1998. Oh, 1998. So what did you do from 87 to 98? Um, you mean from, well, 87 is when I graduated high school. Oh, okay. I thought you said that. I said 97. Oh, okay. I'm oh, 1997. Got it. Got it. Oh, geez, that would make me, wow. That's, you be a little make, older. make you my age. <laughs> <laughs> I started out the same way. I wanted to be a stockbroker and ended up going to talk to my cousin, um, a, a distant cousin who my father said had a savings and loan back in, in uh, the early 80s. And he said, you don't want to be a stockbroker. You want to be a loan officer. Start on Monday. And so I, we kind of got into it the same way. Yeah, well, as I said earlier, I remember one of your uh, – CDs with front runner resources. That was, was awesome. I remember it to this day. It was a, you know, that's, that, that's when, you know, I was really a student of that. I thought that was a great resource. And I oh, remember you. your call, your call was a great one. 
Well, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. So, so you went, you moved to to uh, Boston, and so I came back, and and I just I just got started, and I was a slow learner. Um, I did like you know two million for the year in '98, which was kind of half year. Then I did like seven, and you know I I thought I was doing great, but you know I I was strictly going for purchases just because honestly I really didn't know you know, how to, uh, how to even do a refi. Um, and then my third year in the business, I started to, um, to really kind of understand the business. I remember I did 18.6 million, which really isn't wow. a big deal nowadays, but back then I remember I got sure an award is. and, yeah. and I was really proud of it. And then it went to, you know, 40 million and then it was, you know, 70 and then it got to a, uh, consistent hundred million for a few years. And then, um, Wow. You know, then made it, it, it's a great business to be in. Yeah, it sure is. Wow. So let's move into the core seven. And I, I'm kind of curious because you've written a best selling book and you've started online courses. And it appears that you have, you know, some networking groups and you all, you've built it all around the brand, the core seven. So maybe you could share with us kind of how all that started. Um, well, it, it kind of started in, in a, uh, in a, it wasn't really in an, in an order. It kind of all happened at the same time. I, as I was doing the business, I was, I was trying to better myself by being a mortgage planner. I, I really didn't like the commodity part of the business where it was just about rate. Um, it actually really kind of, I, I hated when I would get rate shopped. Uh, that's yeah. the reason the book was originally called what's your rate. Um, because that, I always said, that's the worst question somebody can ask a mortgage originator. It's probably third or fourth on the importance list, you know, when you, when you do a mortgage. Um, and I also was, you know, the food chain of the whole business was kind of getting to me. So I wanted to be a little more valuable to my clients. Um, I wanted to be more than interest rates. So I started doing a lot of research, uh, learning about money learning how other professionals like financial advisors worked um, so that I'd be able to, to give advice while giving the mortgage, you know, it was one of those, uh, the, the whole Todd Duncan thing, integrate the mortgage into your overall financial plan. And, and it started to go really well. And then it was almost, I was working with this advisor, financial advisor and this realtor um, in this networking group and to make a long story short, they were really just out for themselves. And I really kind of got tired of it and it was, it was not the greatest, uh, relationship. Um, so what I did was I, I started meeting with, um, I wanted, I wanted to build my business with just professionals that kind of got it a lot of, a lot of teamwork working together, not really. I mean, th these other two would put pressure on me every single time where I felt like if I dropped the ball, even if it wasn't my fault, that was the end. And, and I just yeah. hated it. I hated working like that. So me and this, uh, my best referral partner at the time, who's a realtor, we started meeting every week and just, we, would, we were just meeting at a, at a coffee shop to talk about how we were doing on the deals we were working on. And what ended up happening is the people who were really happy happy were ones that I was referring to this financial advisor. I would do this little thing where I'd be talking to the clients and I'd say, uh, you know, whenever I didn't know the answer I, or, or it was more financial, I'd say, you know what, that's more of a financial advisor question. How's your relationship with your financial advisor? They wouldn't have one. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all these people would talk to an advisor and those people were the most happy. So, so this realtor said, Hey, why don't, why don't we invite this advisor to our next uh, meeting? And you know what, we'll bring the closing attorney also because you know, he's doing a good job. Uh, the meeting went great. Uh, the advisor said, you know, I have a couple, a couple guys that, you know, really kind of work well in my business an estate planning attorney, a property and casualty insurance person um, and an accountant. And I, you know, they would love this. And we just, we just started meeting and, you know, when push come came to shove it just it really started to work um we developed um you know all kinds of uh 
methodologies and systems and content over the years. And that's kind of how it started. Um, and so then I was like, all right, I want to let everybody who I work with know about my system. So then I wrote the book, um, wow. which is, which is kind of a, um, which is kind of a, uh, it's a parable. It tells a story of someone going through the home buying process and ending up, uh, getting their core seven team together. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty good story. It's told the, wow. So I'm assuming that your core seven, um, did, did they, did they, did you guys stay as a team for a long time? And, um, I'm kind of curious to how you would advise people to do something similarly. So, you know, is it, is there a need for a value match? You, you had mentioned in the beginning that you initially, it seemed like, you know, a real estate agent and a financial advisor in your networking group, or it was more like, you know, gimme, 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 where this core seven seemed like you were all on board to provide a world-class customer experience. Yeah. I mean, it, each there, there's systems and there's a clear methodology. So we, you know, some of the networking groups out there, a lot of people say, you know, it's not really that accountable. You know, you just go in and people are, well, don't have anything for you this week. And we wanted it to be really accountable where the same things happened every time. So where, where, where the rubber really hit the road for the business partners was when the financial advisor started doing what we call the referral generator, which is how is your relationship with your blank who specializes in blank. Okay. So the, the financial advisor would be asking their clients, you know, what are your two to 10 year goals in real estate, you know, and stuff would come up like uh, children, you know, if, if they were going to have a child, you know, the advisor would know first and that usually signaled they need more space. And he would say, how's your relationship with your realtor who specializes in move up buyers? Um, if when like the accountant was looking at the tax return, if he noticed there was no tax deduction, he'd say, I see you don't own a home yet. You know, uh, real estate's a great, uh, has some great tax benefits. How's your relationship with your real estate agent who specializes in first time home buyers? Wow, and, that's really interesting. Did you guys come up with this? Like when you, did you guys meet on a weekly basis and talk about these triggers? Yeah, we met every week and it developed over time. It really was, it was, it was really interesting. The advisor just started to, you know, because what happens with, with financial advisors and realtors is the advisor typically is looking for, trans, they're doing their thing and they're typically waiting for a transaction to happen. Where the, where the realtor say, yeah, we're selling our house. They'll say, oh, well, I have a great realtor for you. And typically the answer is, we're all set. We already spoke to a realtor. We're listing the house. Realtors do a great job of getting to the client first. So what we started to develop was scripting and a process to, to get to the client, introduce them to the realtor as a resource before they made this decision. So one of the uh, one of the biggest turning points is what we call the equity assessment. So when, when, when every financial advisor meets with their client, they should do a net worth calculation. It's like the scorecard. Here's how we're doing. And we came up with where the advisor would say, you know, Zillow says your property is worth $500,000, but Zillow's not always accurate. How's your relationship with your real estate agent who specializes in equity assessments? And if they didn't have one, he would make the connection. It's just a phone call. But what the realtor was doing was building some rapport, sending a thank you card, and then staying in touch. So when they did buy or sell or had a friend or a family member who was, that realtor would be the one that, uh, that got it. I mean, we had one year where the realtor closed 15 deals from this one financial advisor. Wow. Holy cow. So, um, how long did it take to, to develop a team like this? It, it happened pretty quick. Um, I mean, we were just meeting and it was just kind of, you know, for a while it was just coming up with this stuff. It didn't all happen. And then, then we started seeing that there was a real, you know, like a real system to it um, where, you know, the, 
as a mortgage originator, I was always, you know, I didn't have referrals for the realtor. It just, I, I didn't get them at the time when people were buying the home. Like I said, realtors do a great job getting in front of the um, client first. But what I was great at was referring the financial advisor. I had four points in my process where I would say something about the financial advisor. Now in the networking groups, it's great because every time we meet, they know these four points in my process. So if I say I pre-approved, you know, six people and they haven't heard, they haven't got a referral or an introduction or even an effort, they're looking at me like, all right, what's going on? Um, one is at pre-approval. I always say, you know, most, uh, most lenders use debt to income ratios to, um, to figure out how much you qualify for, but that's really only based on what's on the credit report and the housing payment. You know, that doesn't really take into effect your lifestyle goals. How's your relationship with your financial advisor who specializes in cash flow analysis? And the cool thing about that one is if they got to the advisor, they didn't have as much buyer remorse when they actually bought the home because the advisor actually took them through it, explained the, you know, the tax benefit a little bit better. Um, they were kind of a third party that didn't really have any skin in the home buying game. So they had a lot of trust and, and that was step number one. We then came up with the closing cross sell, which is pretty simple. We just made a call and said, remember we talked about an advisor you know, the, the purchase of a home really triggers a lot of other financial ramifications. You know, we talked about an advisor early. I think right now might be the time to, uh, to speak with someone. And then we have a one month and then we do the mortgage review as, as much as we possibly can. And I'm really just looking for opportunities to say, how's your relationship with your financial advisor? Now, the thing that happened that was really cool was the advisor started thanking me for being like this great referral source. And I was like, you know, if this realtor wasn't sending all this business to me, I wouldn't have the opportunity. Mm. And that's where the three of us started thinking like, and that's where they came up with the, with always asking about the realtor, trying to get the, the person to the realtor first. And it, wow. and it all developed just like that, where it's really systematic. How long did the, that core seven, how long did you guys stay together? Was there ever a need to adjust and add new people and take out people or was it uh, you know, pretty solid? Um, great question. Uh, three people in that one are still in existence, but we, we've brought other people in. Some people have left, um, some because they just wouldn't execute the system. And every, every, every week they would, they would, they would, it's actually monthly. We started doing it. They would come in and, you know, the, the questions we asked are really geared towards the methodology. So it's not like you can say, nope, just didn't have anybody. It it's, and they'd say, well, I just didn't feel comfortable and they would end up leaving. So we had a few of those, we had a few people just do so well. I mean, they, one of our best guy graduated to another level. He became a manager at Big Branch. He stopped producing. He gave his book to somebody else. Um, and we actually started a couple other ones. I mean, it's, there's not a conflict because it's really based on the real estate agent. You know, if you have a solid real estate agent, you can have a group of seven. And as long as you keep good records with your database to make sure that you don't fracture a network, it, it, it'll, it will work. Wow. So do you, do you brand this together? Uh, so when you do any type of marketing, it, do you mention all the people involved or is it, does it just come out in conversation that you have with customers? That's a great question. Cause that's a recent, um, that's a recent thing that one of my uh, advisors that I work with, another one came up with, um, because believe it or not, that side's like, you know what? We don't really talk about the realtor very much. It's a little uncomfortable. So he came up with this um, asking for permission. So the first thing he'll say is he will, he, he'll do a face-to-face -face and he'll bring out um, a picture of that pinwheel that's on the front of the book with the seven professionals on it. And he'll say, you know, I just want to let you know that I, uh, I work with these seven professionals. I'm an expert in financial planning, but these, this is my team. 
I may introduce these people in the process. Mm. You have no obligation to work with them, but I'd like to make the introduction if that's okay. And they would say, fine. And it's, it's the weight gets off your shoulders of, of having them say, no, you know, stay in your lane, bro. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? So, right. so uh, he came up with that, getting permission up front, introducing the team he works with and how they cover the whole financial plan. And then he introduces them when, uh, when, when they come up. So we all started doing that. Well, do, do you have an aftercare program or is where you, you, you close a deal or once a referral's made, uh, do you, when, when you attempt to stay in touch with people in your database or they do, um, are you, are you at that point branded as a team? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it always works like that. I mean, there's a system where if the client says yes, if they go through the process of buying a home, they will at a minimum be introduced to all seven. So when they buy their first home, they should have a full financial team if they like the process, like the fact that we work together and take the introduction when they happen. Because it's systematic for, you know, the realtor refers to the mortgage originator and the closing attorney. The closing attorney and the mortgage originator try to introduce the financial advisor. Once you do a financial plan, you need an estate planning attorney for the will. The property and casualty person is in there for the purchase, but also for the umbrella policy. And the, the accountant's always needed for taxes and adjusting that W-4 to maybe keep a little bit more in your check, all the, all the, uh, all the tax needs. So they will have all seven that will stay in touch. But the after service program is uh, we do a lot of mortgage reviews. I used to call it the annual mortgage review. But now I just call it the mortgage review because I do it whenever I can. So let's say someone called me for a refinance. I, I think that. one of the biggest mistakes that people make is an email will come over. Hey, I heard rates are down. Can I refinance? And let's say that client is at three and a half and the rate's 375. Most mortgage originators would send that email. No, you're all set. I'll call you when, when we can do something. That's a, that's a missed opportunity. Sure is. I would still set up the meeting. And then when I got on the phone with them, I would say, you know what? I've been racking my brain. I've been really, you know, looking at all different options. I thought there might've been an opportunity, but you're in great position already. And they're never upset by it because they've blocked out a half hour for me. And now I just basically told them they only need five minutes on the phone with me. But then I turn and say, but do you mind if I ask you just three or four questions just to make sure I'm doing a good job? And my questions are, what are your two to 10 year financial goals? What are your two to 10 year real estate goals? And has anything changed in your, in your financial world that I should know about? And what I'm looking for is a need where I can say, you know, oh yeah, kids are going to college. Really? That's, how's your relationship with your financial advisor who specializes in college planning? Yeah. <laughs> And that's where I'm able to give a lot of referrals that, that the mortgage review when I can't do a loan is actually when most of the referrals go out. Oh man. So, um, we, I, I'm assuming you give a book to every one of your customers. Do, do, yes. do your core seven as well? Cause I mean, uh, some of them do. Okay. We, uh, we, we, uh, we branded, so for Fairway, a lot of the mortgage originators give them to, Fairway's the, the mortgage company I work for, and um, they give my book to some of their clients. So what we did, so they wouldn't have my name all over it, is we did the Fairway branded books where my name is only on the binder. So that way they feel comfortable handing out the book and you know saying, here's the process without, I don't think anybody would call me anyway. <laughs> you know, after someone else gave the book out, but it was just, uh, just a way to give it out. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the realtors in my group give it out, but they don't do it systematically. We do it every single time a, uh, a client comes to us for pre-approval. Wow. I mean, you're, you're setting everybody up for that conversation. That's so cool. How long did it take you to write the book? It took me a couple of years. I mean, I remember I was, uh, um, it was when I was riding the exercise bike at the gym. And I would just sit there with a pad of paper and just pedal and write. 
and that's that's how it happened. And then, Seriously. Yeah, then I got a ghostwriter to to clean it up. I mean, it was my my sure. writing, but punctuation and and stuff sure. like that. Uh, and and the, I haven't mentioned what it, people would think that I that this happened and this inspired me to do everything. It kind of came later, but it is part of my inspiration. Is when I was sixteen, my my dad passed away of cancer. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. And and he had no life insurance. And they were doing really well. And we still had a great life, but we pretty much lost everything financially. Um, wow. And they sold insurance for a living. They were, they were property and casualty insurance agents. And my wow. mother had just got her life insurance license. And it was funny because she would always tell me how much she loved the banker who she bought a home with. And, and finally, I become a mortgage person. And I say, you know what, Ma, I think, I, I think he was terrible. And she said, why do you say that? I said, you did two purchases. You owned, a, you owned a single family and a second home. I know you put additions on both of them, so you refinance. I said, that's at least four loans where he had the opportunity to introduce you to a financial advisor, mm. and he didn't. And her answer was pretty f- profound because she said, you know what? He probably thought we were all set because that's what we did for a living. Mm. And that's another thing we feel when we see somebody who's, who's wealthy, we feel like they're all set. If we say something, they're going to get insulted. Start and, making and, assumptions. Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't happen. Wow. Well, I could, I could see how that became your big why for sure. Yeah. Um, so, so let's go a little bit into the, the, the other part of your life. Um, you were riding a, riding a stationary bike, but I didn't ask you. So, so when in this process did you get married and decide to have kids? Uh, well, my, my wife worked at the gym. She was the manager. And, uh, you know, so I'd see her every day. And um, that was nine, That was 2000. I met her in 2001. And uh, we got married in 2004. And uh, three kids later. It's, so, she's uh, been, so she's been with you for the most part. For your professional growth. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So how much, so let me hear a little bit about your, your day. So you're obviously passionate about the work you do and you're busy creating a lot of stuff that we'll get into in a second, but um, when, when do you still go to the gym? And I'm, I'm assuming you spend lots of time with your wife and kids, maybe share your philosophy and your values around that. Yeah, I still go to the gym every morning. I, I do a lot of boxing. I used to do it when I was younger and, and it's, it's a, I always say it's a great old man's workout because it's just body weight and it's not too much on the joints, but it's enough. Um, so that's, that's what I do every morning, you know, keeps me, keeps me moving. Every single Um, morning you box. Every single morning I can. Um, and a lot of it, you know, it's not, I go a lot of just to get the bones moving because if I don't work out, I'm, I'm sore. Yeah. What, (laughs) What time do you go to the gym? I go, I go like at seven thirty, eight o'clock. I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a, a night owl more than I am a early riser. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When, when do you get home at night to spend time with the kids and family? I usually get home at like eight o'clock. So I see them, you know, throughout the day. I'm there while they're eating breakfast. I, I, uh, I drive them to school. Um, and then I don't, I, I just say good night to them. I see them, see them about eight o'clock, eight thirty at night. Do you work weekends? Uh, no. I'm on the clock though. So, so I'm available, you know, if I, if, if one of my business partners needs a pre-approval or something like that, um, I'll be there for them. I mean, I, I shouldn't even say the pre-approval it's, it's more an updated pre-approval. Cause I, right. I, I stopped having those, um, those weekend pre-approvals with no documents. I, mm-hmm. I stopped that a long time ago because it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth the paper it's written on. It's not really a, a could be strong. It could pre-approval. be a big waste of time. Yeah, for right. sure. And, and certainly takes time away from everybody. So let's go back to, to uh, your course seven and the fact that you built courses around it. So I'm assuming that loan officers and maybe every, the, the real estate agents and financial advisors and insurance agents um, can all learn how to do their own build their own course seven. Is that what the course is? Yeah. There's, well, there's a few courses um, that uh, the one that we focus on is the one called uh, the course seven exclusive mastermind groups. 
And the way we've built that is we're going to, there, there's a course and lots of training videos that um, anyone can, anyone can become a group leader and start their own group. Um, and so there's a, we teach them with the training, we teach them the methodology, how to run their monthly mastermind meetings and one-on-one -on -one partnership planning sessions. Um, we give them what we call the recruiting package so they can recruit the right people for the team. Um, and we also have the accountability reminders, which are basically just emails and a monthly sales call to keep everyone on point with the process. Nice. Very cool. One of, one of the big um, hurdles that we've run into since we've created it is people just don't have the time to, to set it up because everybody's working, doing their job. So we created, it's a, it's, we call it the recruiting package and it's basically a 12 minute webinar that explains what the process is. So you could, so we have copy and paste emails that you can send out to, you know, either managers or, um, or your social media outlets that basically say, you know, we're looking for, you know, a, one of the seven professionals, whichever one it is to speak at our next mastermind meeting or who's interested. And then if they are interested, you just copy and paste this link with the webinar and send it to them. And in there is the application questionnaire. So you really find out who you're working with. Wow. We've broken it down where, where you could like keep work and just send it out. And when it comes back, then you can, you can get real and find out if they're a good fit for the group. Nice. How, how do you divide your time? Uh, you're still doing loans and you're still, um, I'm sure coaching your team and uh, you're still meeting with your course seven and you have courses. How are you dividing your time to, to get it all done? It wasn't easy. I mean, my, 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 my volume took a hit, um, but it was kind of by design. I mean, I, I used, like I said, I used to do a hundred million every year. I've closed over a billion dollars in loans. Um, I didn't love the business back then. I didn't like, I, I liked the business, but I didn't like the way it worked with my referral partners. Um, so now I'm probably in the 40 million a year range, which is, Very which is good. fine. Mm -hmm. And I have a great team. I mean, they, they run pretty much everything. All I do are these mortgage reviews, loan consultations and have a pipeline meeting. I, I don't get involved unless there's trouble. Um, and they do a great job. So there's really not much trouble. Sometimes I just have to make a phone call saying, Hey, listen, you know, volume's way up. I apologize. Thanks for your patience. A little stuff like that. Right. Right. Um, the course <laughs> seven meetings are, are easy because I look at it. Like I get to have a two hour meeting with six people. And I mean, you run a mortgage company, you want your reps to like meet with their business partners. I get to meet with six of them in a two hour period. And we're talking about, we're talking about referrals. We're saying, okay, who'd you talk to? How many pre-approvals did you do this month? You know, and I'm, I'm asking the realtor, how many buyers are you working with? So, and the way the system's set up is I'm looking at my realtor like, okay, if you're working with 10 and I've only talked to two, we, we kind of got to talk about what That's happened with the other eight. And, and, is, and, and is all this in your, in your course or your mastermind? Yep. So they have the mastermind agendas, the full resource center, the, partnership planning worksheets, the, uh, uh, pretty, pretty much everything. We put a, put a lot of work into it and it, I've been at creating this a long, long time. And the reason was cause I, uh, I ran into technical issues. That's not my, uh, we finally got a good technical team to, to run and set everything up. That was, that was difficult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've made that mistake trying to do things that I'm just not good at. That's funny. By the time I figure it out, it changes. There's something better that you need. You know? Right. And, you, and then you spend all this time and money and then you go, okay, let me just hand this off. <laughs> right. Uh, but um, oh, before, we, before we end this, I also wanted, I mean, you, you're on it because before this podcast, you were nice enough to send me um, a nice card and a couple brownies. And uh, I, I, I took them home yesterday when I came in the office, they were, the box was sitting on my desk and I took them home last night, hoping to share one with my wife. And actually I was hoping to not eat them because I'm trying to eat healthy, <laughs> but um, I ended up eating both of them. So 
Thank you very much for <laughs> the very thoughtful, thoughtful gift. So Mark, how, uh, how can people get a hold of you if they want to talk about this or how can they get in touch with you to get involved in your mastermind, your course, or even get a home loan? Um, great. Uh, that's, there's a couple ways. Um, so on the core seven side, uh, you can go to mycore7.com. I mean, I encourage everybody to just put their information into uh, find a group. Um, you know, just if there's a group in your area, the, uh, the group leader will contact you. That's if somebody doesn't want to start one. Um, my email, if you want to talk to me directly, is markm at mycore7.com. That's mark with a K, M, at mycore7.com. Um, and on the mortgage side, it's uh, mark with a K dot Mayoka, M-A-I-O-C-C-A at fairwaymc.com. Beautiful. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time today. You've been very generous with your time and your thinking, and I look forward to talking uh, some more in the future. Appreciate it. That was it. great, Dan. I had a blast. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you, Mark. Have a great day. You too. All right, man.